Take off your shoes. Take off your socks. I'm gonna start downward dog. Find a nice downward dog and walk it out a bunch. And what I'm doing here is coming up and down on my toes. You can do that if you want to. Just move around in your dog in a way that feels gratifying. Then pick up your right leg, downward dog flip, and let that foot fall behind you and just kind of wiggle into that hip a little bit. And then put that, that's your right foot, down to the ground, find a low lunge. And find as much heart opening as you want here. The main thing is that so I stretch down the back leg. That's the main thing for me anyway. You want to square your hips and get that so I stretch really nice. And then straighten your front leg. That's your right leg and lean down over it. Let's find that front hamstring. You can take your back knee back just a little bit or a lot depending on how flexible your hips are. This is the splits but today we are just going as far splits wise as you're into. And then turn to the side, press right up, Padatanasana, straddle forward fold. Breathe upside down a little bit. And then we're going to move into a warrior two. I think I'm going to the, let's call that the little. Left, left, right, I don't know, pick a side, or you two. A warrior two is a, one of those poses where you're just like, could I be prettier? I don't think so. Straighten your front leg and come into triangle pose. Triangle is one that I'm working on getting a little deeper in because for a long time I was getting less deep. I was like, I'm going to dial back on this thing because it's not really working for me. But now I'm feeling like, hmm, maybe I could go a little deeper. Bend that front knee. We're in Parsvakonasana, extended side angle. I'm going to take my top arm over my head, making that long line that Vikas Iyengar really likes between the foot and the hand. You're making like kind of like an isosceles triangle here. It is, the legs are doing approximately the same shape as warrior two. All right, and then come back to your prasarita padatanasana. And then take your hands to either side of your front foot. Step back to plank, let's hang out in plank a little bit. I'm going kind of fast through stuff today because I forgot my phone. And I, when I don't have my timer, I am a little bit manic. Um, but sometimes it's fun to kind of move faster. Put your knees on the ground. Put your forehead on the ground. Here we are in puppy pose. Wag your tail if you want to. And then come to Downward Dog. Come up and down on your toes if you want. Pick your left leg up, Downward Dog splits, and hang out here for a bit, rolling into that hip. You can move that knee above you if you want to, or just find a spot that feels like it's releasing and stay there. If this pose stresses you out, you might need to build your shoulders a little bit. That'll come. All right, that same leg, your left leg comes between your hands. Back knee comes to the ground. Open your heart. It's a, did I mention that it's a, Low lunge, low lunge. 
back knee is on the ground and you're finding that gorgeous psoas stretch in the back leg holding the heart also good straighten your front leg lean down over it coming into your uh, half hanumanasana it's sort of like a runner stretch if you are more flexible than me, you can take your back leg back and go move towards the full Hanumanasana, which is the splits. Good. And then turn the other way. Here we are in Prasarita Padasanasana again. Straddle forward fold. And then come to warrior two with your left foot forward, yeah, left. Make sure you're on the other side for warrior two than you were before. Looking at my warrior two here, I think I could come down a little bit further than I am. That's maybe another pose where I was like, maybe I'll be nicer to myself. And now I'm like, maybe I could be a little meaner to myself, as in, Finding a place where maybe it feels like a little bit more work, but it's getting me a little deeper. Here comes triangle. So the deal with triangle pose is you got to keep your hips right. And if you're a little stiff in the hips, you might move them out of alignment in order to come down deeper in the pose. And you don't want to do that. That's actually going to, that's going to mess up your pose. Get your hips right and then think about how far down your leg you want to go. All right, come up. And we're moving into Parsvakonasana. So I'm finding warrior two legs, and then I'm coming down with triangle arms, basically. It's kind of like halfway between a triangle and a warrior two. This time I'm taking my arm forward and up, kind of making that long diagonal between the leg and the arm. And then, uh, I want to say isosceles triangle, but I actually don't remember anything about triangles. A skinny triangle. All right. Step back to a plank pose. Planking it up. Planking. Okay, put your knees on the ground, forehead on the ground, child's pose. Breathe into your sinuses, breathe into the front part of your brain. You can put those prayer hands behind your head if you want to. And then lace up your hands behind you, put your head on the ground, and come to a headstand prep. That's you're in downward dog with your head on the ground. If you want to, you can lift up your legs. And if you want to, you can straighten your legs. I'm still at a point where I like my legs to be in different formations. That feels more balanced to me. However you like your headstand, including if your headstand means having your knees or your feet on the ground, it still it still works. It's your seventh chakra. Just connecting it to the ground. And then I... Let's do cat cows. When you're ready, exhale to a cat tuck and inhale, cow lift.
Come to Downward Dog. And move around in your dog to the extent that you want to. And then take your right leg forward. Let's find low lunge again. Come to an I'm really into this pose lately. I love some low lunge. Finding your hips here. Opening your heart. I used to teach all my classes like this. They used to be like clipping along, moving, moving, moving. Take your back knee off the ground and move it into a high lunge. But just this past year, I've brought that timer in. I've kind of disciplined myself to do some longer holds. It's not my natural way though. I like to move. I'm vata, vata, air energy. All right, from your high lunge, put your left, I believe that's your left hand on the ground and come to side plank. Just pick a hand and come to side plank. I had this idea that I was gonna do from side plank that kind of backfired, you'll see it in a second. You can put your bottom knee on the ground if you ever want to, or step your front foot kind of like to the front of you. A lot of people like that. Then I was like, I'm gonna put my hand on the ground and come to an upward plank, right? That would make sense, right? Except I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. My feet kept slipping, so I made it into an upward table instead. Come to an upward table. You see what I was trying to do? I was trying to like do side plank, and then upward plank, and then side plank. It seemed like it should have worked, but I think my hands were in the wrong place, and as usual, I put my mat on a hole, so I couldn't do it. Maybe you can. Upward table and upward plank are the same pose. Just one of them has your legs straight out. That was the one I was going for, but I ended up with upward table. Let's do a side plank on the other side. Yeah, side plank. Good. Oh, and then I'm trying it again. Can she do it? Nope. Nope. I think I forgot how to hold my hands or something. I couldn't do it. Just come to an upward table. This time in my upward table, I turned my hands facing behind me instead of facing towards my feet. You could maybe try that if you want, if it feels okay on your wrist. I'm just breathing, feeling that thing. All right, take your hips down. Come onto your back, hug your knees into your body. I did this sequence in front of this fallen tree. It's kind of calling to me, this fallen tree. Strain your legs. Like you're doing a dandasana, that is like your legs are straight out in front of you. Like if we were sitting, you would be in an L shape. And now we're on our back and you're in an L shape. Your legs are like straight up to the sky. And then pull your legs towards you. Pull is a strong word. Invite your legs towards you. Um, this is forward bend, flipped over. Vashimotonasana, flipped over like a pancake. You're kind of holding your legs into you. You're going to feel why. It's a big hamstring stretch. We have no goals. We have no goals with how close we want those legs to get to us. We're just feeling the hamstring stretch. And then you can pick up your hips further and put your feet down behind you if you want to. This is plow pose. I like plow pose. If shoulder stand is something that you like, you can come to a shoulder stand from here. I'm not really a shoulder stand person myself. I like plow though. All right, roll those legs down. Oh, and we're gonna cross our right leg over our left as in an eagle, and we're gonna cross our right arm under our left, and look what we're doing crunch in this way. Try to be as elegant as possible. You're exhaling everything in, and you're inhaling everything to like a long rope. 
I think I did it seven times. It is just crunches, but because of the positioning of the legs, bringing the obliques in a little bit. Yeah, and then keep that shape in your legs, but let your arms go out to the side, and then let the whole shape go to the, let me see, the left. Your legs are wrapped around each other like a rope, but it's just a twist. We're twisting with our legs wrapped around each other. Nice for the digestive system. And then pick up your legs and shake everything. This is called dead bug. Shake everything. I think I was inspired by the number of bugs that I had on my body at that time. And then wrap your left leg around your right and your left arm goes underneath your right. We're just making ropes with the body. Exhaling, taking everything together and inhaling, taking everything apart. And you're looking for a way to do this with muscular grace. I am doing it, I think, seven times. Yeah, okay, and then let your arms go out to the side, but keep that shape in your legs and let the whole shape go to your right. You are doing a twist, but the twist involves your legs being wrapped around each other, and so it's an extra twist. The twist is just extra getting extra deep. It's nice. And then untwist, shake out everything just a little bit, and then come to happy baby. Take your arms to the insides of the thighs and the outsides of the shins. Breathing in your happy baby. And then disentangle yourself and take your hands to the outsides of your feet and make a V-shape with your legs. Kind of like Happy Baby, except we've got Upa Vista Konasana legs. The legs are open to the sides. Kind of big stretch here. And then come down out of that, put your feet on the ground, back of your head on the ground, shoulders on the ground, let's do bridge pose. Roll your heart open, pick your hips up. And 
if you want to scoot your hands a little closer to your heels, the pose gets a little bit more like camel. And then you're like, wait a second, this pose is camel, because it is. The only difference is the angle of your head. And of course, the fact that you're on your back instead of on your knees, but it's the same pose. I'm going to take it into a wheel, putting my hands under my shoulders, pointing towards my feet, and pushing up. Wheel pose. I like wheel. Takes a little while to learn to like it, but maybe you're in quarantine. Maybe this is a good time. The way to learn it would be to come up for like one second and come back down, and then come up again, and then come back down. That's the way to learn anything. All right, come down. Hug your knees into your body. And then rock up and down a couple of times along your spine. Come in eventually to a tabletop. Let's inhale to a cow lift. And exhale, cat tuck. And inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, down dog. Can your dog out a little bit? And then when you're ready, put your left foot through and take your back knee down to the ground, finding a low lunge on this side. This is such a great pose. It's so great. It's about legs and in being totally about legs, it becomes about the whole rest of your body. And most of the standing poses in yoga are like that too. So much legs that the rest of the body has really unique access points. Okay, make it into a high lunge. Come onto your back toes. And if you feel tippy, if you felt tippy in the low lunge or you feel tippy in the high lunge, it just means that your feet are in the wrong place. Just scoot them over, get a little more stability. Yes, and then turn to the side and come down to Prasarita. No, wait, here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm having a flat back with my legs apart. Flat back, legs apart. Find your back. And then walk your hands forward. I like this thing. This is like halfway between Prasarita and Down Dog. If you want to move from one bent knee to the other bent knee, this would be about getting into your hips. If you like it. It took me a long time to be able to do this. People who have tight hips are going to take this bend into their knee. You will know right away if you're doing that. Don't take anything into your knees. Your knees are fragile. Even the best knees are a little bit fragile. All right, walk your hands forward again. We're going to put our uh, knees on the ground and our feet behind our knees. This is frog. Everybody loves frog. Coming on down. Frog is a groin stretch. If you feel it in your knees, as with that last thing we did, you got to change the pose. If your knees are like, ow, then that means you're putting too much weight into them. you got to come up a little bit. Come up a little bit. Do less of a stretch. Be nicer to your knees.
Yeah. And then come up and put your feet together behind you. You can't see what I'm doing, but I have my feet apart with my feet behind my knees. And now I'm putting my feet together so they're touching and we're coming down to a wide-legged child's pose. Rearrange whatever in order to be comfortable in your wide-legged child's pose. I thought that the fallen down tree was sort of reminding me of our current situation. It's a mystery. Like, why did I need to fall down? Why? But maybe to make room for something better, I don't know. All right, come up, put your knees together, and we're gonna do regular child's pose. Come down to your regular child's pose. Maybe it just fell down because it wanted to fall down. Take your arms above your head and stretch them towards the sky. Yeah, get into your shoulders a little bit. And this is camel. We're coming into camel, right? You're going to come up onto your knees and fall over a little bit. No, that was just me. And then come into that same heart opener that you were doing a second ago when you had your arm stretch above your head. And we're just going to duplicate it coming down into camel. Now, you don't have to come all the way to camel. You can put your hands on your hips. What you're really looking for in this pose is a heart opener. Find a nice heart opener. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. You don't have to get deep into your lumbar spine if that's not what your body wants. Good, and then come up gently, gently, gently. Get some bugs off your face. And then we're gonna do a pose that I very rarely do, but I like a lot. And if you have a block, you might need a block in this pose. I don't need a block in this pose because um, I'm blessed with flexible quads. Come on up and take your shin flesh, what's that, calf flesh, out to the sides manually. And put your hips down between your feet I wish you could see this better, sorry. And then come back and roll your shoulder blades back and down the back as you're coming back. Um, and probably a small percentage of people are gonna be able to come back as far as I can. As I said, I, for whatever reason, my quads are not a problem for me. Um, most people um, come back just a little ways and are like, holy cow. And so you come to that place where you're like, holy cow, and stop, okay? In particular, this is really good for a block. If you sit on a block, Put the block between your feet, sit on a block, and then come back a little ways until you feel a quad stretch. That's the safest way for most people. Anyway, we're all looking for a quad stretch. I have flexible quads and I have flexible shoulders, and it does absolutely nothing for my life. I benefit in no way from that, except that I can do this. All right, come on up. And, oh yeah, we're gonna put our forehead on the ground and grab your heels, this is so good. No, when I said forehead, I meant top of your head. Put the top of your head on the ground, grab your heels and roll like like into this like circle. You're making a circle with your spine. Most of your weight is in your arms. You got legs, nothing in your head. This is rabbit pose. I do kind of look like a rabbit there. It's a nice spine stretch, really a good one. All right, and then let's do Janasrusasana. Take your right foot inside your left thigh. And this was where I realized I would rather do this pose, going downhill than uphill, so I turned around, but you don't have to. Come down over that, whatever leg that is. Looks like maybe my left leg. Just pick a leg, Janasrusasana. We're gonna breathe here for a little bit. Since I've been doing these online classes, I've been like, at what point am I gonna start being like muscly and giving the people what they want? I know you all like that muscly stuff. I know you do. I have not been able to motivate to do it. All I can think about is yin. All I can do is yin. I just feel like that's where the world is right now. Yin is where you're just hanging out and being in your body like we're doing now. That's, um, for me, that's where we are.
Try to slow down your breathing here in your long hand pose. All right, and then come up and switch legs. Don't move away. Be in your body. And then come up and do any last thing you need to do. We're going to lay down in Shavasana. Yes. Yes.
right wiggle your body limbs whatever inhale your arms in one direction your feet towards the other direction and then come on to your side in the fetal position and stay there for a little bit And then come on up, come to a cross legged, take your hands to your forehead, breathe into your sinuses, honoring every cell in your body. Take your hands to your heart. Dedicate my practice to you. Thank you for practicing yoga. Namaste.